Cowbells are loud rhythmic sounding musical instruments popular in Afro-Cuban and Latin American music compositions like the salsa, the mambo, the merengue, and others. In a typical Yoruba pronunciation, cowbells are referred to as agogo and the use extends beyond just music. In this video, we'll be reviewing the basic steps of playing the agogo, the hand placement, the patterns, and other techniques will also be explored. Details coming right up. The literal transition of agogo is time pits. However, the wristwatch, the wall clock, and even table clock, cowbells and handbells are also referred to as agogo because they pretty much serve the same purpose. They keep track of time. In music compilations, cowbells are used in association with clavis to build the foundations of the rhythms. Looking at the physical characteristics of the cowbell, cowbells are made of metals similar to the type found on the neck of cows on farms. Actually, that's where the name came from. That is bells belonging to cows okay, or cowbells. But no, we are not hanging these to any animal today. To play the cowbell, you need the striking piece and the main cowbell. Now let's look at how this works. Looking at the bell, the metallic body comes in different sizes. And this determines the timbre, which is the tone color or quality of the tone, and the pitch. For instance, the chacha bell is a small sized, highly pitched, accented bell, while the timbale or mambo bell, which is medium sized, and the bongo bell is quite big with a low pitch sound. The cowbells also come in different variations depending on the manufacturers. For instance, I have a single handheld bell that also has a clamp or a hook, and you can attach these to um, your drum set or a stand. Okay, I have these constructed by a blacksmith from Nigeria. Okay, it has a handle and it's a double bell. And from the color and the rust, you see this bell has seen better days. Okay. I also have a triple bell with a clamp. Actually, I was playing this earlier. You can attach something like this to your drum set or to your bongo or conga. I mean, they're just varieties of attachment and, and um, clamps available for you to hook up your bell to your instruments. Better still, I have another bell attached to a foot spider which gives me more flexibility when playing multiple percussions at the same time. Now I hook this up to the pedal with an head shaker and a tambourine to give me a more robust play. Now let's look at the striking piece. Now this could be of any round object. It could be wood, plastic or fiberglass material. Mine is made of wood. I have mine taped at the edge to reduce the damage to the bell from friction and impact during play. Just like clavis, cowbells are also idiophones, meaning that they produce sound from reverberations when struck. Of course, there is a technique to holding the clavis and also the cowbell. For cowbell with andus and clamps, it's quite easy. You just screw the cowbell piece or the attachments based on your preference to any instrument. However, for cowbells with no clamps, you use your non-dominant hand in the form of a claw and stick the narrow or the closed end of the cowbell into the hand like so, okay? So literally the hand sounds like a support. Another tricky thing is you could have your finger at the back. These can be used to mute or mute the sound. Of course, this is optional, but I find this that it has been very useful for me to produce more sound and more variations. Now the bell sits in your non-dominant hand while the striking piece goes on your dominant hand. The fingers extend to the body used to mute. This alternates between a quiet and gentle sounding to a ringing sounding cowbell. The cowbell as a percussion instrument has three main parts. We have the top and the open hand and these, the striking piece strike with some inches apart. We have the middle, where the striking piece strike the main body, and we also have the side. 
any of these can be muted and unmuted. For instance, you have the top, the body, and the side. So if you are looking at muted and unmuted, you could have six variations. For instance, you have the top, middle, side, muted, top, middle, side, unmuted. And these can be used in different variations in your arrangements. Note that there are no strict rules with playing either muted, the top, the side, or muted. But as long as you play to time and follow the rhythm, then you should be fine. So the task now is that I want you to play as many combinations as you could master. Start with the muted, okay? Do the top, the middle, and the side. Create a fun combination with all the sides. Then take it a step higher with a muted tone and blend them together. For instance, you could have the top, the middle, the side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's a muted. Now, if you're muting, you're going to re release your finger. Top, the middle, the side, side. Top, middle, side, side. Top, middle, side, side. Now let's try the muted, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It is important to play with a calm and relaxed posture. Your wrist muscles should also be engaged during play. I advise that you watch the Harvard recommended wrist exercises to enhance your muscle strength. If this is your first time here, I say a big welcome. Please like this video, subscribe, share, and ring the notification bell to receive updates on our new video. To wrap up the clip, I want you to play the cowbell in a freestyle version. Get comfortable with the different sides. The top, the middle, the side, muted or unmuted, whatever works. And we'll be looking at playing the cowbell to different time signatures in the next video. Till then, I say take care, God bless you, and remember, Jesus loves you dearly.